Today, we're going to be talking about a parasitic infection that, by World Health Organization estimates, results in the death of a child every minute in sub-Saharan Africa. The disease is malaria. This three-year-old child, living in a small village in Uganda, contracted a type of malarial infection caused by the parasite Plasmodium falciparum, one of several species of the Plasmodium parasite that causes malarial disease in humans. Falciparum malaria is the most common and one of the most deadly forms of the illness. So when three-year-old Farida was brought to the small clinic in her village by her mother, the health workers were very worried. Farida had been suffering from cycles of high fever, shivering, and sweating, or diaphoresis, for the past 10 days. Her mother had initially tried giving her some teas made with traditional medicines, but every 36 to 48 hours, the paroxysms, or cycles, of fever, shivering, and sweating returned. Farida had been listless and had started complaining of terrible pain in her head. When the whites of her eyes started to turn yellow, her mother realized she needed to seek medical treatment. At the clinic, the health worker on duty examined Farida and found her liver and spleen to be enlarged. The health worker asked Farida's mother if the child had been sleeping under a mosquito net. UNICEF outreach teams distributed one insecticide-treated net per household to the village homes about a year before as part of a coordinated malaria prevention effort. But Farida's father thought that because the women and girls weren't earning income for the family, it was less important to protect their health by putting them under the net at night. So Farida was left exposed from sundown to sunrise to the bites of the Anopheles mosquito, the primary host or carrier for Plasmodium falciparum. Malaria is a mosquito-borne illness that commonly occurs in tropical or subtropical parts of the world, like Uganda, where rainfall and warm temperatures lead to standing water that provides an ideal environment for incubating mosquito larvae. Near Farida's home, there was a small dump site where empty food cans and washing water were disposed of. The cans were often full of stagnant water, an ideal breeding ground for the Anopheles mosquito. After sundown and all through the night, the female Anopheles mosquitoes feed on human blood. One of these insects drew blood from Farida's arm and in the process transferred the plasmodium parasite in its motile sporozoite form into Farida's bloodstream. Once inside the bloodstream of its human or secondary host, the sporozoites travel to Farida's liver, where they quickly colonized liver cells, entering the schizont phase, a phase in which the parasites replicate inside cells, forming multiple merozoites. Merozoites can then bud off of the hepatocyte and enter the bloodstream undetected by the immune system because they're wrapped in liver cell membrane. Once these wrapped merozoites, also called merosomes, reach the lung vasculature, the merosomes begin to break down over the next 48 to 72 hours. Free merozoites are then released in pulmonary capillaries where the red blood cells are densely packed and moving slowly so that they can easily be invaded. Once inside Farida's red blood cells, the merozoites were again hidden from her immune system and they could start replicating again, forming characteristic ring shapes and passing through the trophozoite phase before breaking out to infect more red blood cells. In this way, the parasite presence was amplified in Farida's body in two phases, one inside the liver cells, and that's also called the exoerythrocytic phase, and one phase called the erythrocytic phase because the replication happens inside the red blood cells. Each time the merozoites were wrapped in hepatocyte or red blood cell membranes, Farida's immune system couldn't detect their presence. But each time the parasite was in its exposed form in the bloodstream, for example, when the merozoites would break out of the red blood cells, the immune system could then detect their presence and deploy defense cascades to try and eliminate the parasite. This explains the cyclical nature of Farida's fevers. In infected humans, 
some red blood cells also become infected with parasitic gametocytes, which are then ingested by other mosquitoes to continue the cycle of infection. This is how the parasite exits its secondary host. After examining Farida, the health workers at the rural clinic quickly decided to send her to the regional hospital in the nearest town of Ibanda. A neighbor offered to drive Farida and her mother to the hospital, so mother and child were loaded onto the back of a small moped, Farida wrapped tightly to her mother's chest with a blanket. During the 45-minute drive, Farida had a seizure and began to lose consciousness signs that she was now suffering from cerebral malaria, a serious complication of her falciparum infection. Infected red blood cells that circulate through the body are usually destroyed by the spleen. This is why Farida's spleen was enlarged when she was first examined. But the plasmodium falciparum parasite tries to avoid this fate by expressing adhesive proteins on the surface of infected red blood cells. This gives the parasite a better opportunity to replicate because infected red blood cells will stick to the walls of small blood vessels and thereby avoid destruction in the spleen. Unfortunately for Farida, this led to the blockage of many small vessels in her brain, causing her seizure and other neurological symptoms. Upon arrival at the hospital in Ibanda, Farida's blood was immediately drawn for several lab tests and she was started on an IV anti-malarial medication called artesunate, part of the artemisinin group of drugs that treat malaria. This drug had recently replaced IV quinine in accordance with World Health Organization recommendations. Farida's blood smear showed ring forms and gametocytes, confirming the diagnosis of falciparum malaria. Her blood tests also revealed a low platelet count elevated levels of bilirubin consistent with the finding of jaundice, hypoglycemia, and a normal white blood cell count, all confirming the diagnosis of falciparum malaria. Shortly after her arrival at the hospital, Farida fell into a coma, and despite anti-malarial and supportive therapy, she died 48 hours later. At present, there is no vaccine for malaria, but there's an urgent need for one, and Efforts to generate one are ongoing. Malarial infections can be prevented with mosquito nets, insecticide spraying, and even by raising public awareness about the risks of standing water in endemic areas. But in high transmission areas, these measures may not be enough because parasites can evolve to become resistant to the insecticides commonly used on bed nets. The cost of these preventative measures is also an issue and often means that many people in the world today still don't have access to them.